Hello. This quick take video training will focus on using the non-project design flow within the Vivado design suite. So some of the advantages of the non-project flow are that it's a straightforward compilation style flow. Source files are simply imported and compiled through synthesis and implementation. There is no project overhead and all the processing from synthesis all the way through bitstream is done in memory. You can save design checkpoints along the way at any stage. And there's a powerful Tickle API that you can do design and tool configuration as well as robust reporting at any stage of the process. You can also use the integrated design environment after each step. Design analysis and constraint assignment can be performed. And this can be done in two ways. You can use start GUI and stop GUI commands to actively edit the design data in memory. Or you can use the open design checkpoint command to open any design checkpoint for analysis and constraint definition. The non-project flow does not provide you some of the flow control, uh, source file management, and run result management that are available in the project-based flow. So since this is a batch flow, you either operate it by typing tickle commands interactively or writing a tickle script as you see here. This basic script is broken out into several portions. The first part is where you're going to find your source files. You need to define where your Verilog, VHDL, or IP sources may reside, as well as your constraints. The second section here are the baseline synthesis and implementation commands needed to process the design. There are a number of optional commands that we'll cover, but these are the basic required commands to get through the flow. The Tickle API provides me a wide range of reports that I can run here at the end of the flow or anywhere in between. And then finally, I'll generate a bitstream. So let's break the parts of this script down in a little more detail. Firstly, the assembling the design phase. You can use the read VHDL or read Verilog commands to identify files individually, or you can use the glob command to take all of the various sources with a VHDL or Verilog extension in a particular directory. And for VHDL, I can use the dash library option to define a library for all the files in that directory. In this example, I'm using the read Verilog command to call out a top.v file. If I had system Verilog sources, I would use the read Verilog command with the dash sv option, as you see here. So I'll add a few more Verilog directories here to compile my design. If I had either EDIF or NGC sources, compiled either by third-party synthesis or an IP generator, I could use the read EDIF command to import those. And finally, if I've got IP that's been either generated through the core generator tool or through the Vivado native IP catalog, I can import those both using the read IP command. This command is looking for a .xco file for core generator or a .xci file for Vivado. And finally, if you've got your XTC constraint files, you use the read XTC command to import those. So next, we have the core synthesis and implementation commands. Synth design, you feed it a top design name. In this case, it's top and a target part. You've then got op design, place design, and route design. I'm going to make these bold so they stand out at the end of the script. After op design, I have an option to run power optimization, which will introduce clock gating to reduce overall power. After place design, I've also got fizz op design, which will do additional logic optimizations in the design to try to improve timing, area, or both. As I mentioned earlier, we can create design checkpoints at any time, so it's probably a good idea after synthesis to write a checkpoint. A checkpoint is simply a net list at that particular stage in the design process, along with the constraints and the current status of the implementation, whether it be synthesis, placed, or routed design. Notice for the checkpoint here, I've defined in a variable, a dollar sign output directory, and I'll go ahead and create that variable here. So every time I run the run, I've only got to change this once and all my output files can be redirected elsewhere. The Tickle API allows me to create a variety of reports at any stage in the design. There are a large number of standard reports that are supplied with the tool, as well as any level of customization required. Here I'll just do a simple utilization and timer report after synthesis. I'll also elect to create a new design checkpoint after placement and routing. Notice the naming so I can differentiate them. And after the design routes, I'll elect to create some reports. So I've got a timing summary as well as a detailed timing report, utilization report, DRC report, 
I can actually write the whole net list out in Verilog here if I wanted to do that for verification in another simulator. And here I'll write the final XTC stored in memory, uh, just in case we've made constraint changes along the way. These are the constraints that were actually used during, during routing. And finally, the write bitstream command is used to generate the bit file. Now let's go ahead and run that script. To do that, I'll type vivado mode batch and then source the script. Notice my source files were read, the output directory was created, and synthesis is now started. The synthesis compilation messages provide some useful information about how the design is being compiled. Notice the Vivado synthesizer is completely timing driven and it's using the XTC constraint file while it's processing the design. Synthesis does its timing and area optimization and processes the design. Notice now that synthesis is complete, it's, it's written my checkpoint design, created my utilization and timing reports, and then moves on to optimization. Remember, after optimization, we elected to run power op design. It'll then go into place the design. And then physical optimization was also run. And finally, into routing. You'll notice the checkpoint designs and reports we've elected to generate are being created along the way. And finally, the design is processed all the way through BitJet. And if I now look out in the output directory that we created, I can see all the report files as well as the design checkpoints. And I've used a clever naming convention so that I know which stage of the design the reports were created. I also mentioned that this flow can be run interactively. Notice here I've used the vivado-mode-tickle command to put me into the tickle shell. And I'm running an abbreviated version of our earlier script that'll just take us through synthesis. Notice now that after synthesis is completed, I can use the start GUI command to start the interactive design environment to allow me to do design analysis, constraint definition, I.O. pin planning, and so forth. Notice that when the GUI is invoked, I don't have all of the environment features that I'm normally used to seeing in a project flow, such as the flow navigator and project summary. Within the synthesized design environment, I've got access to all of the netlist analysis features, such as the netlist view or the schematic, as well as all the constraint definition capabilities, such as I.O. pin planning, clock analysis, and timing constraint generation. We've also got the ability to generate a number of reports for utilization, DRC, signal noise, and clock networks. I'm simply going to type stop GUI to go back to the tickle shell to continue the design. Notice the interactive design environment GUI is shut down, and I'm back at the tickle prompt where I can type op design, place design. I'll use the start GUI command again to invoke the interactive design environment. And notice when I do this time, I can actually see the place logic objects in the design. I'll stop the GUI again and continue on through route design. And notice this time when I use the start GUI command, the environment opens with the routed design displayed. Notice the farther I zoom in, the more details about the routing I can actually see. I can zoom all the way down to the bell level and select bell level place logic. I can also make routing and placement manipulations to the design that's actively loaded in memory. I mentioned earlier that you can also open any design checkpoint in the environment. I'll use the open checkpoint design command here and select the routed checkpoint that I created during our last run of the design. Notice it asked me I've already got a design loaded in memory, do I wish to close it or open it? Because I can actually have them both open at once. And notice the design checkpoint is now open. I have all the same design analysis and constraint definition capabilities I'd have with the start GUI stop GUI method. So any previously saved design checkpoint can be open in the interactive design environment. One thing worthy of note here though, that if I do want to make constraint changes and want to save those changes, I need to use the export constraints command and write a new XTC file or override the original. So as you can see, the non-project batch flow has a lot of capabilities to compile the design, but also to analyze and report on the design at each stage of the design process. This provides designers with a lot of flexibility. They can quickly run the commands in batch mode 
but then use the interactive environment if needed to analyze issues or correct problems in the design. Thank you very much for your time.